for the Real Estate and Chill Podcast, the newest and coolest podcast. So tune in. Two experts discussing the real estate market, loan officer James Chaudhry and associate real estate broker Kevin Iglesias. Beware, this is not another boring podcast. This right here is the shit you need to hear, respectfully. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to episode 24 of the Real Estate and Show podcast. I'm your host, James Chowdhury from United Mortgage here with... Kevin Iglesias, associate broker of Realty Connect. Today, we have a VIP guest in the building. My man is bringing sneakers and real estate combined. He's got more sneakers than Foot Action and Foot Locker put together, people. He got more sneakers than Michael Jordan, I think. We have today, Femi and a banjo and Femi 2.0. Let's go! What's going on? What's going on? What's going What's going on? Appreciate you guys being here, man. Please introduce yourself. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Femi Adabanjo. Uh, on the handles, Femi the agent. Um, been in the business 19 years now, going on 20. Now you got 2.0 in, in the game now. Yeah, now I'm taking myself back 19 years. <laughs> I got to <laughs> rethink everything again and start from the beginning. So that's what we're doing. Yeah, my name is Femi. Um, Femi Adabanjo. I'm just getting into real estate. Um, I'm liking it, so let's stick with it. <laughs> how's it how's it get it transition the business with the you know with the pops um it's good um hands-on experience a lot of stuff that i don't really have to look up because i have a first hand um 19 person years. right like next freaking to me so an encyclopedia a lot of yeah. information <laughs> a lot of information a hands-on experience so, Femi, learner, so let's let's dive into uh wait which Femi? <laughs> come on <laughs> You have to, the OG we have Femi. To, we have to clarify. Come something. on, we gotta clarify. <laughs> Femi or 2.0? What are yeah, we doing? Yeah, there we right? go. Well, Femi 2.0. We'll, we'll call Femi, that Femi. Femi. Or OG. 2.0, OG Femi. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what made you get it started in the business? Um, I wanted to get started in real estate to first have a inside track on looking for a house for myself and also having more time to spend with the kids, um, because. Um, when I got into real estate, my son was, he was only two months old. Um, my daughter was four at the time. So, you know, wanted to be able to split up the schedules between me and my wife so that someone was always home with the kids. Gotcha. So that's why I got into the business. So you basically got in to cut out the middleman and <laughs> find your own home. Right. What, the, what the heck, man? Should have called me. No, nah, right. I, I was I was to direct connect. <laughs> Have to go to the plug. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go to the plug, right, right. You want to be the main, the main, the main person, right? You want to cut out the middleman. So today's a special episode. We bring in three fire kicks. Three fire kicks. That you got to judge, and we got an audience. We got. I don't uh, know how fire they are. We'll let him be the judge. I guess. <laughs> they either fire or the trash. That's it. Those are the, those. Those. Are the there's no. There's no in between. The there's no the in between. Okay. No lukewarm. It's either fire or it's trash. Okay. So let's let's let, let the game is begin. We got an audience here. Adrian Williamson, Realtor Eats, New York. He's got some pairs on him. All right. Okay. You got a couple. You got to you got to judge these two pairs that he's got on. Okay. Bring them out. Bring them out. Welcome, Adrian. Welcome, Adrian. Let's see what you got. Size twelve. You know what they say about big feet, big hands. <laughs> I heard you saying. Come on, keep it real. Keep it real. Keep it real. Keep it real. You might have to touch it with your hands because I don't want to spin this. <laughs> Pair one, what do you think? Yo, you know Yo, what you're thinking. Pair <laughs> one, it's fire or it's trash. Pair one. <laughs> Pair one to me would be trash. Oh! Sorry, my man. No! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to keep it real. We got to keep it real. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, all right. All right, but he still got a chance. He still got a chance. He still got a chance. <laughs> Pair number two. Pair number two is fire. Fire. Oh, I, can, oh, I, can okay. I can definitely rock with that, with the red, with the black, the combo. I can rock with those. What, what would you rock with these? Um, I'll throw some shorts on with it. And, um... You know, either a t-shirt or polo. You know, a nice polo shirt. Yeah, All right. Some shirts. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was right. waiting for him to say trash. Wait, where's the third? Where's the third? <laughs> you got oh, he two. Got, he All right, so you're 50% fire rate. Okay. Right. So you're you want to go 50. next? You want me to go next? Nah, you go next. Do, do the honest. Right, we'll save the best for last, I guess. <laughs> All right. Not so, uh, you know, I, I brought this in a bag. Not in, uh, <laughs> not in the boxes, not okay. In the boxes. Not in the. Okay. Oh, didn't, you didn't well, bring didn't them in the. No, no OG okay. boxes. We need right, the so boxes. That that takes over. To verify, yeah. Right. All right. I promise you these. Well, he works with you. I think he official, right? Uh, I don't know. No, I yeah. promise you these aren't fake. I promise. <laughs> but look at the inside of those. And then we got. I'll show you 
right there. Damn, what the heck? What you do to those? I balled in these. Great fours. They just came out like two weeks ago. Man. Yo! Oh my gosh, you guys gotta zoom into these. We might have to take those off tape. Jesus. Those are these CP. Yo, those are these CPR. For real. All right, let's go, Femi. First pair. Name these pairs. These are the cool gray fours. I got these like probably like three years ago, four years ago. Fire or trash? But what did we with the fire and the trash? What are we condition? Are we going yeah. on condition? Yo, some but some OGs shoes are not in the best condition yeah. either. That's true. So, yo, yo, you gotta be honest. Yo, Come think on. about the 1990s. <laughs> Michael Jordan no, coming out. With no, 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 no! Don't hype it up. Don't hype it up. <laughs> we gotta just take what we got in front of us, right? Oh, it's trash. How about we take out the condition and we just look at the shit? Yo, if we go with condition, then the cool gray four's gotta be trash. I mean, we're gonna have Damn. to take those. What about the, the sneaker overall? Fire or trash? The the cool gray the, the fours fours is fire. Um, but the condition of those is not. Alright, so we got a fifty we got fifty percent on Nah, one. those are trash. Right. Get these off the table. <laughs> we gotta take those off the table. Yeah. Second right. pair. Cause your sneakers, we gotta keep them crisp. You know what I mean? When we rock it. hundred percent. The Yeezys definitely those is those is fire. Come on, now. come on now. Those is fire. You saved yourself. You saved yourself. You saved yourself. The Kyrie's Kyrie sevens, right? Sevens. Yeah, those are actually like I like the color. I like the colorway. Um, those yeah, are fire. All right. Yeah, those are fire. Two out of three. Two, two out, out of three. three. Two out I passed the track. I just got right, those next, Yeezys. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna move these. You just got those Yeezys, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm gonna move these away because uh, you know I just bought in these shoes yesterday, so I don't know if it was the best idea. That put them on the table, right? Right. 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 Let me get these out of the way. All right, then we got Kevin. All right, all right, all right. So I sold all my Jordans. Okay. So quick story. Before I got into real estate, I was heavy into Jordans, man. I probably had like a whole like closet full of J's. Well, you said you had a sneaker store. Pretty yeah, much. basically. I had like a sneaker store. I had okay. every J. I had like the Concords, the Breads, the True Blues. Like every sneaker, you, the OG Aqua 4s. Like I had, had everything. everything. But I had to sell them all. Because right. I was like, I had no money when I got into the game. Desperate yeah. time calls for desperate measures. Yeah, 100%. And then I had to sell everything. You came everything. up. We see, you know, you're blinging on the, on the wrist. I mean, I see what's <laughs> nah, going on. No, no, no. I went to Canal Street. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Don't put me out there. Don't put me out there like that. <laughs> I thought I was helping the situation. I'm sorry, guys. I no, thought no, no, I was here. No, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> we got to bleep all that out. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. Okay. Dead stock. Okay. Yeezy. Zion. Come on, man. Come on. That's just one pair. One okay. Pair. Okay. One pair. okay. Well, I gotta wait till you throw them all on Yo, the table. Yo, he's so right? excited. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Do we do a drum clap? Do we do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Don't pull out the 700 on me, bro. He did it. Okay. I mean, I see fire all the way through. Yo, fire all the way! <laughs> I don't know what to say. No, three fire, out of three! Fire, 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 three fire, out of three! Man. He three out of three, man. He got. Yo, he you got, know what I gotta say though? He got a lot of trash, heat trash, trash. Yeezy did <laughs> drop Donda. <laughs> it's game over, bro. Get these off the table. Right, Yo, you right. a hater, bro. You he a hater. sold everybody a visual I album, know, bro. What they, is you this? ain't getting no album, right? And you're supporting Kanye? Come right, on, bro. Right. Yo, it's Adidas over stripes now, man. Come on. Yo, it's checks over stripes. Get it right. Nah, 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 come nah, correct nah, or nah, don't come at all. I think it's checks over stripes. I think you you 100 percent right. I mean, it's checks over stripes for you. Yo, so get to this episode. Get to this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Trash this whole entire thing. This is just you ask my son. He's gonna say something different. You ask me, like you said, I'm the OG in the game, so you know. All right, you gotta I leave your pair. Up. You gotta leave your pair because now we got the OG about to show off his collection. Ooh, whoa, so put yo, your pair up. Wanna, yo, that's that's put like your pair an embarrassment up. putting mine up to his. Bro. I'm gonna leave mine. Hey, up you gotta throw you yours up too, right? What are we doing? We throwing them all up? No, 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 no. Yo, somebody get it. Yo, get a trash bin. Get the trash bin for this. Yo, the thing is, they're gonna be right in front of my face. I just balled in these yesterday. So those things stink then. <laughs> you got any Febreze in the house? <laughs> oh, damn. He brought out the official package. I mean, you told me to bring damn. some heat, so. I have to bring a couple pairs. Ooh. Oh, wrapped in plat. Oh, man. You talking dead stock just now, right? <laughs> dead stock <laughs> easy, right? I have to bring some dead stock too, bro. Right? I didn't know where we was damn. going with it today. Is that a cereal box? That's not a cereal <laughs> box. That's the box that it comes in. When you pull when you pull up to the park with those, they know that you mean business. You know what I mean? That looks that looks so serious. So I have to bring a couple pairs. I mean, what would you guys say in 2020 or what, in any given year? How many pairs of sneakers would you say Nike makes? I have no idea. You're right, brand like new, this. like new, like producing new sneakers. I have no idea. 
I mean, we would say thousands, hundreds of thousands. I would say probably. so, yeah. yeah. I don't know what he's about to pull out, but I know so it's about to be what special. What we got to say is if you Google top 20 sneaker of 2020, I got Ooh. one of the pairs of the oh, top man, 20s of 20. Mm, those are clean. Are these, off-whites? these are the off-white fours. Yo. Yo, that's fire. You, that, yo, yeah, sure. I mean, you told me to bring heat. When you sent me the text, I had to. Yo, the, check the camera. Make sure you get the, the, the right angle. Stash, Damn, that's the off-white. Make sure that yeah. I had something. Just so you know, these episodes are not filmed live, so you cannot come in here and <laughs> run up on us. <laughs> this was free up two weeks ago. I need this. And we got the Jordan Premio Bin 5s. Um, for those who don't know what these are, oh, oh, damn, those are. If you look in, I'm gonna let you look in the tongue and you tell me what the sneaker number is. Sneaker number is. Hold up, I wear glasses too. Oh, you wear glasses? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 1733. Out of? 2133. So damn. it's only 2,133 pairs of these made. And. I got a pair right here. Wow. So. All right, speeches. episode's over. We, we, now we what do I do? I mean, you, you said <laughs> you so I had, to bring, I had to bring the heat. I didn't bring another pair. Uh, I kept right. it three like you said, but, you know, keep them in the, duff, in the dust bags. These are dead stock, too. Never been worn. Will you ever I had these? a feeling you were going to bring a lot of dead stock, so I didn't want to be left out. So, you know. Would you ever wear those shoes? I think I will. I will. I haven't worn them yet, as you see, but at some point, I'll wear them. One Question. day when I'm in the mood. Okay. How many pairs of shoes do you own? You got his own separate room? <laughs> they, we do. I do have a own separate room. For my <laughs> I lost count after 175. Oh, my gosh. Gosh. And I gave away a lot of pairs. So. Yo, Mike's here. See, that's Mike. That's that's the OG of uh, the past. <laughs> Mike, look at Mike's in the building. Mike's in the we, building, we, yo. We yo, Mike, put up those. Put, yo, put those low tops on the table, bro. Those are OG. Come on. Come on. You gotta show those on the camera. Yo, come he's on, wearing them all three right now. I don't know. Put your foot up. <laughs> if you want to put them there, right? <laughs> Trash or fire? Air Force Ones. Those are always gonna be fire. Yeah, in that so. condition though, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we were talking about the sneaker. The condition, I'm not. You gotta keep your sneakers crispy, folks. Sneakers gotta stay crispy. I am a bad. Maybe uh, you have a pair to ball in, and then you have another pair to chill in. But you know how we do now. You know, our sneakers, we need them to chill in. So. You got to double up. On we got to double up. We got to keep them clean. We got to keep them crispy. So let's take these everything. boxes off. Let's, Presentation let's, is everything. Let's like my son said. No, no, no. Leave them on. Leave them on. But take the boxes off so people can see. We'll leave them on here. Okay. We'll take the boxes down. Do I have to sit with my shoes in my face this whole time? As yes. you can see, you may have to. All right. We'll do it. We'll, we'll rock with it. <laughs> but question, do you also, um, you know, collect dress shoes as well? Like, do you have, like, a huge collection of dress shoes? No, not not a huge collection. Um... Just sneakers, the only ones I collect. What, what do you, I, have, I have a lot. I have a couple pairs of shoes. I what mean, you, not a lot, but you know. I what are your couple. thoughts on like designer sneakers? Fan or not? Um, Fire trash. It depends on which ones you're talking about. If you said Balenci- Balenciaga, I would say they trash. They yo, look, what the heck, yo? I, I look like, yo. They look <laughs> like, to me, they look like they, orthopedic <laughs> shoes. That's just my opinion. No, no, no. Wait, wait, hold up. You're not talking about the ones opinion. that look like socks, though. You're talking about the. No, the ones that look like socks, those are those are crisp. Those are fine. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Those are fine. Nah, those are very yo, comfortable. Get out of here. Get out those here. are very comfortable. Those are like socks. But the really thick ones. Yeah, nah, those, I mean, those we, we trash. gotta keep it. We gotta yeah, keep those it. 100, trash. Right? Those, those are trash. One hundred percent trash. We'll pop up a picture right there. Right. Those are trash. Right. And they feel like bricks. They I, look like, really I, I hard. They look ears. really okay. uncomfortable. Yeah. That's like right. a, it's like a murder weapon. You, you never felt those? <laughs> Literally, it feel like a I'm brick. I was gonna get the same ones that you had, the Balenciagas, but you have them in white and black, right? White, black and white, black and white. Yeah. If I went to the club and I couldn't get in and I took that shoe off. That would be a weapon because I could have somebody <laughs> with those because the heel is so thick. Nah, it's, right? it's real thick. Those yeah. things are ugly. Those things are ugly. They're like they're like a twelve hundred. They're like twelve hundred. Twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, they're yeah. like twelve hundred pot. So and to me, they look horrible. Where, where do you put your you know sneaker passion for sneakers into real estate? Like, what, how do you combine that together? Um, I think for me it was easy because you know sneakers I've been collecting since I was eighteen, nineteen, and I've loved sneakers even before I could afford to buy any pairs of sneakers. So I think to me. A lot of the fire and the motivation for collecting sneakers came because it was five of us growing up. So, of course, everything that, you know, that we wanted, our parents wasn't going to give us. They weren't going to give us the fire J's. They weren't going to give us the Reebok pumps. They weren't going to give us any of those things that we wanted. So, for me, it was, you know, get out in the field, start to hustle, do the things I needed to do, which is why I started working when I was 12, to be able to get the sneakers that I wanted. Because you figure anything that damn, you really 12? want. Yeah, I was a paper boy in the projects. Oh, damn. Where we lived in Coney Island. So... 
um, that's where the fire, I think, the motivation came from. Um, you know, knowing that the things that I want, my parents wasn't going to get me because it was more than one mouth to feed. It was five of us. So um, that's where the motivation sort of came from, or the fire and the desire. That's where it came from. So, um, but to compare it to real estate, I would say it's probably almost neck and neck because I've been loving sneakers now for 30 years. And I don't 100 see that. 125 pairs? I lost count after, after 100. After so it could be more. After 75, I lost count. Damn. Wow. Yeah. What's what's one of the sneakers that is like the most expensive sneakers? Because all right, people that don't know about sneakers, you could sell them. You know, you could sell one of these pairs for double of what you bought them for. Yeah. yeah. So these, what is these, the most? These right here. Um, these, what are they uh, worth right now? Off white fours. If you look them up right now, they're going for like two. either nineteen hundred or two thousand. Damn. And what you cop them for? Like two uh, something? I, no, I I didn't get them at um. Oh, oh I didn't oh, get yeah. Time. I didn't get them at um box price. I paid. I think 900 for these. Damn. So um, a lot of my sneakers I usually get at box price. I normally get it at retail, but... With Yo, who the plug? Who the plug? Right now? <laughs> with certain sneakers that, that's so exclusive, it's kind of tough sometimes to be able to get it at that price. So um, anybody that you're getting it from, even your plug, you got to think about it. Like, you want them to still be able to make money so that they don't feel like you're taking advantage of the, of the friendship or the relationship. You know what I mean? So yeah. for me, I look at everything as business, so... You know, you got to make your money. I respect it. I respect the resale grant, um, the whole resale business. So, you know, I don't mind paying a couple of dollars for it, you know, over what they paid. As long as it's not, you know, nothing too crazy. You know what I mean? So that's just the game. What are we going to do? If you sold all your sneakers, could you buy a house with those, with that money? <laughs> I could buy I could buy a nice house out of state somewhere in a Wisconsin. Man in the <laughs> I could yeah, I could I could buy a nice house out of state. Yeah, with, with all the sneakers that I own. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. You know what I think's crazy? I feel like a lot of people that I knew growing up that were like buying and selling shoes ended up in real estate too. Yeah. I don't know why. I feel like it's just like a hustler's mentality. Like they were young because like they don't have a job and they're just like flipping shoes and stuff yeah. like that. So like I like the first time I flipped a pair of shoes, I bought um the glow forts something glow fours I forgot what oh, green glow yeah, yeah the green, the green glow, glow fours yeah. I actually glow have fours. a pair in the house right now I probably wore them three times they I still love brand those. new I literally I bought them I I literally went to the store my mom dropped me off picked them up and then like somebody offered me like a hundred bucks more for them I was like yeah cool no problem it's a take no them. Yeah. I didn't even wear them so I was yeah. like. All right, yeah, take it. And I was like, yeah, I mean, the re the resale game has gotten so big, and I think every single year it just gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. I mean, everybody yeah. now, we, even with everything that happened last year with the pandemic, you had to think up some sort of hustle. So if you have something that someone wants and they can't get it, and there's a value behind it, you being able to sell it and make more than what you pay for it, I think it's only it's only fair, it's only right, right? It is. We're not, it's true. You know, we're not doing anything for free. All of us, like you said, we're all business people. We're all hustlers. So. If I have something that somebody wants and you can't get it, there's a premium behind it, so you gotta pay. There's, you know, it's nothing wrong with that. So you yeah. started working at twelve, doing the paper route to basically support the addiction to your sneaker. To support the addiction to the sneaker game, but and and and, and food, you know. And, yeah, of course, you gotta, you you gotta know. get fly. Right. We saw that picture that uh that handsome popped up. Oh, you <laughs> <saw> that <laughs> <laughs> uh, he put that picture. Out, yeah, me with the uh, coconut suit. Right. Okay. He put that up. Okay. <laughs> when was that? What year, what year was that? That was. Probably 20, 21. Dang. You saw how baggy the clothes was. That's, that's what we did back in the days. We wore 5X t-shirts. You and know. you've been in the business for what, 19 years? 19 years. Yeah. 19 years, man. You've seen it all. I've seen everything. W what are your thoughts about the market now? Like, Have you ever seen something this crazy? I've never seen it this crazy. In um, 06 and 07, it had gotten really crazy. But now, what's going on now, to me, doesn't make any sense. The numbers, what the people are paying for houses, um, and you're still getting out bid. You're putting in offers of. I put in an offer the other day for sixty five thousand above ask. Damn, and you still and didn't did, get it. And I did not get the deal. I know. Wow. I had a cash buy at eight fifty. We were putting in offers at eight fifty cash, getting outbid by fifty, sixty thousand. It's crazy. It's insane. Well, like, let me yeah. tell you another funny story. Someone that I know went into contract to buy a house, and the seller ended up getting another offer above what this offer was that they accepted. This buyer paid over ask. The seller called. The agent called the buyer to say that the seller wanted to give him fifty thousand dollars to walk away from the deal. What? Wow. Have you guys ever heard that? No, nah, I've never I've heard, heard of that. that. Yeah. So, like, what happened was the seller ended up getting an offer of, I think, one hundred and twenty above ask. So the seller's mentality, the way he's looking at it, is if I give him fifty thousand to walk I away from take the deal, 60. I still get another sixty or seventy thousand uh, to come up for me, and everybody wins. 
But the buyer, at the end of the day, is not an investor. He wants the house to live in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he didn't walk away from the deal, but that's how crazy the market has gotten. Damn, that's insane. And I've never, like I've never seen or heard that before in my life. I'm but, that's what, but that's 50, what we're dealing with right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. $50,000 to walk away from the deal. What would you guys do? I take it. Yeah, I would I'm out. It. Make sure it's cash. Make sure it's all blues. <laughs> Put it in the bag and let me get that bag and get out of here, right? Yo, get that duffel bag. Get the Louis duffel bag. I'm out of here. And I'm out. Yeah. But that's how crazy the market has gotten. Um, right now, you really just, you got to put your best foot forward because if people I, are losing deals left and right. You yeah. just say you got a, a cash buy and you can't get them a house. So right now, it's the market, is, it's, it's, it's insane. What do you think? You think it's going to shift eventually? Like, what do you think it's going to start to cool down? What are your it, thoughts? It, it needs to shift and it has to correct. Um, it can't stay this way forever. Um, I would probably say, based on what I see, I think maybe about another year of this, give or take. Yes. That and means you got to hustle, make money. You got to hustle. This is the perfect time to make money. To, and if you're not making money, money in this market, you your know, hustle's not strong enough. You got right to you, you you be a hustler. You got to be out there with your buyers because they're. If you have buyers that are motivated, be out there with them all the time, looking, looking, looking. Try to get them in. Try to have them in as one of the first set of people getting into that house. Let them know, buyers, if you're paying attention. Any house that you're looking at, make sure that you're coming in at, at least full ask. That's only to get you to the next stage of negotiations. And understand that you are going to pay more for that house, but understand that you're also competing against 10 or 20 or 30 other people that are going to come in to put in offers. Um, I had an agent that I worked with the other day. They did an open house. And in the weekend, they got 66 offers on the house. Damn. Wow. 66. But n not only that, like making a full price offer doesn't mean anything anymore. Well, because term wise, term wise, now people are waving inspections, waving, waving appraisals, waving, waving appraisals, giving away Just the like firstborn. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. they doing crazy. Things. I almost lost my son the other day. They told me to give him away. Force to get the house. 2.0. No. Yeah, we were about to give away 2.0. It was getting crazy. It was getting crazy out there. That guy, you know, cooler has prevailed. And he's still standing here. Yeah, the market is crazy right now. The market is crazy. So you really, you got to be aggressive. And like you said, coming in at full ask is only going to get you to the next stage of negotiations, folks. Coming in less and saying, let me put in an offer and see what happens. You're wasting your time. It's never going to happen. Demand nope. is too high. The demand is too high. They're not coming back to you because there's 20 or 30 other offers that are above whatever you came in at, which you're not even coming in at full ask. So understand that this market is really serious, and all us agents that are working with you buyers, you guys really have to be serious and know what you're looking to do. Understand that you are, like I said, you're going to pay more than ask, but also understand that you got 10 to 15 years at least before you decide that you're going to move out of that house. So you will have the time to build up the equity and everything. So never feel that you're overpaying for a house. And if that's how you're thinking about it, to be 100% honest with you, you really need to set this out because this is not stopping anytime soon. So if you want a house, just really, you got to be serious right now. You got to come in, come in heavy. And what if I told you, everyone listening, that if you buy a house <laughs> for 50000 over asking right now, and if you, uh, I gave this example before, I'll say it again for everyone who might be watching this this time. Um, you know, a house that it, you're purchasing right now, let's say it's worth, you know, it's 50,000 over what it usually is. It's 450 right now. You're getting a 3% interest rate. You're getting a lower interest rate, but you're paying, you're paying more, more for the house. Right. Fast forward into two years from now, you're paying 400, but you're getting a 4% interest rate. These are all hypothetical numbers. Um, you're going to be, you're going to end up paying more over the life of the loan with that 4% interest rate, even right. though you're paying less on the house, then taking advantage of the situation right now with the low interest rates right. and, you know, moving forward while paying a little bit over, you know, right now. Right. So in the long term, it still makes more sense to, to buy, buy now. in the to first buy now. scenario yeah, 100%. than in the second scenario. So I want your opinion, both of your opinion now, because true or false, are people really paying what the house is worth or are they shopping for that monthly mortgage since the interest rates are so low? I think a lot of people are... Um Shopping for that monthly mortgage. Um, a lot of people know that, you know, looking now that you do have to pay what they're asking for the house to give yourself a shot. Yeah. If you're lucky, you'll pay what they want for the house. Nine times out of ten, you're going to end up paying more than that. Okay. But understand that if you spend, just like you just said, 50000 above asking, understand, guys, you have 30 years to pay that off. And out of the 30 years, when you break that down, it bre it's, breaking do it's broken down into 360 payments. So you spend fifty thousand above that, above the number that you wanted to spend. How much would you say that is extra a month? Uh, a few hundred, probably. Let's say two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars extra a month. But understand that when you're buying a house, you're buying from a, from a place of emotion. 
So if you need to cut out other things so that you can put yourself in a position to be able to afford the mortgage, that's what you need to do, right? Because if you're not spending that money on a mortgage, what are you spending it on? You're still spending the money on the rent, and you're not getting any tax benefits or anything back from that money that you're spending out every month for your rent. So it makes more sense, just like he was about to say, it makes more sense to spend that money on the mortgage, at least I think, um, so that you can get the tax benefits, you can get your own space. And I think a lot of what happened last year with COVID, it's making a lot of people, which is, I think, part of what's creating all this urgency right now, because a lot of people are saying, if we end up getting caught up in another pandemic, I don't want to be stuck in my one-bedroom or two-bedroom apartment. I want to make sure that I have my own space and, Lord forbid, something happens, everybody in the house at least has their own space. Right. You know what I mean? Or well, at least that's how I'm looking at it. And I, I try to project it to people that way so that, you know, you keep that sense of urgency on. If you're really serious, you still, like you said, now is the best time to buy. Yeah. When I bought my house in 2002, interest rates at that point was 6%. I ended up getting 85 Damn. Because wow. I had just started work. Well, I was working less than two years. So at that point, <clears throat> a lot of the parameters for mortgages, you had to be at the job for at least two years. Yeah. I wasn't at my job for two years. I was doing medical billing at the time, which is why I ended up getting a higher rate. But for me, I was looking at the bigger picture because I said to myself, in another, in about a year, so I'm going to end up refinancing. Yeah. yeah. Six months later, I refinanced and ended up getting 5.75. I mean, I lost. I ended up getting laid off a week after I closed on my house. But that's a whole other. <laughs> that's a whole other conversation. But you just have to look at it as look at what the interest rates were years ago, and look at what the interest rates are now. So paying three percent on the, on a mortgage right now, four percent is nothing, guys. So it's fire. It's not trash. It's, it's not trash. trash. <laughs> it's fire. The interest rates, as you said, the most important part of the whole transaction yes. in your monthly payment. Because you're, if you're not buying a house cash, you're paying every single month. The interest rate is the most that's important the factor. Right. That's that's what you have to take care of, you know? Right. So And that's what I try to tell people all the time too. Like you said, it's about everything that goes into that that goes into your payment and also your, your overall situation. So if you really do have to buy a house, you have to buy a house. That's never gonna change. Yeah. You know, you have a lot of people who say, you know what, I'm overpaying for the house, but if you don't buy the house, what are you doing? You're still you're spending money. Still yeah. paying yeah. rent. You're still yeah. paying rent. And you're not. What are you getting back for for, for the rent that you're spending every year? And think Absolutely thirty years from now, how much is that four hundred fifty thousand dollars house going to be worth? Exactly. Yeah. It's going to be worth way more than four. It's it, at the rate it's going right, right now, now. If we yeah. look at the past and see where appreciation has been, Where's it'll been? be worth way more than four hundred fifty thousand right. dollars in thirty years, right. and you have no mortgage on the property, and you're completely free and clear. Right. And, and at the end of the day, equity. and at the end of the day, you're not buying a house as an investment. You're buying a house because you need a place to live in. That's never going to change. So all these things that I think a lot of people think about or they overthink, I just always try to talk them back onto, you know, the common sense, you know, place from what we're doing. And, you know, hopefully for the ones that make sense, we do it. And the ones that, it, you know, it doesn't, we just, uh, we sit and we wait. So. so 19 years in the business, what's one of the most craziest houses you sold? Like the craziest deals that you can remember? They're like, damn, this, this is insane. Um... Insane as far as what? As far as Just price any, or? Price, anything. Commission, whatever. Story-wise, crazy story was one of the things that you went through. You're like, this is crazy. Uh, I guess crazy when we're talking numbers. I did a deal maybe like two years ago or maybe longer because I don't want to get assassinated. Uh, <laughs> we did a deal. I think it was almost $2 million, uh, My commission on that was. Damn. Wow. We gotta bleep One that out. Deal. We gotta bleep that out. We're gonna bleep that out for <laughs> right, you. Right, right, right. Right. We'll bleep that out. DM no. him if you wanna know. <laughs> These shoes on Canal Street, people. <laughs> that's it. It's fake flex. <laughs> but, um, but another, I guess another story I can think of is um, there was one lady that I was working with that was referred to me, and she had 30 days to be out of where she was living. And she was actually living in her sister's house. Her sister was about to evict her. Wow. Her sister. Wow. Um, Sounds like something James would do. Yeah, I would never crazy. do that. I love oh, my James. sisters. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I just lost a lot of respect. <laughs> um, so she had um, 30 days to get out of the house, and she had just been referred to me. I had a house that I actually had just finished uh, rehabbing, and that was about to put on the market. So um, I showed the lady a couple of places, and then I showed her that place, which she fell in love with. Um, I was able to put her in contact with one of the mortgage guys that I deal with, and we were able to get the deal done. Um, in about three weeks, where she ended up moving into that house that she did. That was a $2 million deal? No, no, no. That okay, was, okay. Yeah, that was less than that. Um, we were able to get the deal done in, in about three weeks. So in, in less period of time, you know, 
so she didn't end up having to get evicted. Um, cause her sister had started the whole process. They served her with the paperwork and everything. Wow. Um, so something like that, you know, made me feel good, you know, to be able to help somebody change else. somebody's life, yeah. change, change somebody's life. So, I mean, essentially that's what we're all doing, you know, in this, uh, in this real estate game where changing people's lives and helping people that never thought that they could afford a house or, you know, even achieve that American dream. You know, we help them be able to, uh, achieve that American dream. So, so really I, I, I want to bring it back real quick. Paper out. When you were 12. Yes. To holding that big, I mean, we're going to bleep that number out. Yes, please. Holding that big commission check. Like, wh what was going through your mind, man? Like, what emotions were you feeling? Because that's huge. Um, it, was a, it was a good feeling. It was actually um, a referral again um, for that, that place that I sold. There was a um, three family in Brooklyn, a uh, family of five or six uh, family members that needed to get the place sold. Uh, five of them were on board to sell it. Uh, the other one wasn't. But as we all know, majority rules. And um, we were able to get the deal done. So that made me feel good. And, you know, at the end of the day, the uh, the commission is always the reward. But, you know, to be able to get a, uh, a nice a nice size check definitely, um, you know, always helps. And it makes, you know, it makes you feel good. I mean, to be able to, you know, to, to do something like that, you know, you know it's huge. Yeah, you know, this real estate, they say, makes the most millionaires. Imagine another business that you can make, I'm going to bleep it out again, right. that much money in one shot. Like, yeah. it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Because think about it. If you have that one deal and you have 30, 50 other deals under you, just that one deal is yes. well, somebody's I mean, salary. In yeah, and, 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 yeah, like you said, in this in this business, you can do one deal that you know can be somebody's salary. But a lot of people don't understand a lot of the time, a lot of the nonsense that we've all had to put up with or endure. For us to be able to get to that point. Oh yeah, it's so, a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It's I mean, not HGTV it's easy. Not HGTV. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. I show you three houses. Yeah, that's what I thought when I got right in the back of the limo. <laughs> I pull up, show you three houses. You buy one, and that's the end of it, <laughs> folks. That's fake real estate. That's not real real estate. So, just understand the amount of work that we put into it. It's always nice when you know you you can get something like that. You can be able to put a deal like that together. Um, and like you said, it's essentially also be able to change people's lives. So it's it, it's really cool. It it's is. A, it's a great feeling. But you know what? Honestly, like the uh, the thing on my side is there are some situations where some people can't. I hate to bring like the dark side of it. Boo, James, whatever. But uh, there are some situations where you can't. And that's like the that's the unfortunate part. That's the unfortunate you know? part, unfortunately. I mean, all, all we can do, you know, for people like all of us that are sitting at this table, for all of us, we all, you know, we value our reputations and we work with some sort of integrity. So we try to do the best that we can do for people. Yeah. Uh, to try to put them in the best case scenarios, and you have half the people that will listen, and then you have some that won't because they were told by whoever those are that you know they shouldn't take any referrals from whoever the real estate agent is. But if you're working with a real estate agent and you look up that person's track record and the, the type of reviews that they're getting on the line and the the you know just the way that they work, it gives you an idea that this person is not looking to try to bang you do any harm or do yeah, any right. harm to you they all we we're, we're all out here to try to help you your best interest yeah we're looking out for your best interest and trying to put you in a better situation than what you were in before you started working with us so yeah. that's what people need to understand it's 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 a great business when it's great and when it's horrible like you said it's yeah. it, it, it can be you know it, it can be bad and you know for me being in it 19 years i've seen the good bad the good bad and the ugly so what would be your advice to other people that want to get in the business like what would you tell them well, um, now, now you you got your son with you 2.0. So, yeah. um, I would say you need to have a lot of patience. Um, you can't take rejection personally. Understand that the people that love you and the people that are looking to see you succeed, you know, you can get rejected from them. That's part of the game. But the people that you're working with are gonna reject you. Um, but always know to stay the course and know that. Them rejecting you, that's nothing personal. Everybody that you deal with is not going to say no to you. Um, you just really have to have tough skin to be able to do this uh, do this business and to be able to sustain um, in this business. Know that nothing is personal. Um, just go out there and keep that same work ethic. If you keep that work ethic and you continue to bang away, um, you know, you will be able to see, you know, the other, the other side of it. And, you know, the phone will start to ring when you least expect it. So that's where you want to get your business to where you can build it up where all your referrals are coming. And those referrals will come. As long as you do the right thing by people, they're going to sing your praises to others. Um, once they do, the phone is going to start to ring when you least expect it. 
Let, let me ask you a question because I got started, right? And I, I jumped into real estate not knowing anything, right? I didn't have a mentor or I wasn't a part of a team or anything like that. Neither was I. That's amazing. 19 yeah. years strong. Yeah. That's, cheers to that. Cheers to that. We got to do cheers to that. Yo, cheers. cheers. 19 years cheers. strong. Cheers. But what would, what would you say were one of the fears that were holding you back? Like, did, did fear hold you back in the beginning or you just said, nah, you know what? No, it, did, it didn't really hold me back because uh, I'll tell you, and I've said this to anybody that asked me, uh, my first year in the business, I sold, I did one deal. I only sold one house. That was me buying a house and my broker taking it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for me, that didn't, it didn't deter me. I just said to myself that in my mind, I know that there's a lot of people that are doing this business and that are successful at it and that are making money. Uh, for whatever reason, in my first year, I, I didn't align myself with those people. So I was working at a mom and pop company at the time, and I figured that I had to go align myself with a bigger company. Um, and, you know, maybe things would happen for me a little bit better. Um, when you go to the bigger companies, it starts to take some sort of shape. But still, at the end of the day, whatever you're looking to do is always going to start and stop with you. It's always the belief that you have in yourself. And when people can see that, they don't have a problem sharing information with you. And you think about how it was 19 years ago compared to how it is now. Everybody shares a lot of information with each other now. It wasn't like that 19 years ago. So for me, it was just, um, you know, trying to stay the course. Um, was it frustrating? Yes. Um, did I have a hard time at it? Yes. Did I want to quit? Did my wife tell me to go get a job? Yes, she did. Um, but at the end of the day, I knew that I had to, you know, sort of stay the course, and I knew that, the longer that I did it, at some point, everything was going to start to take shape. And that's what it did. And thank God, you know, like I said, 19 years later, I'm still standing. Only a true hustler can survive 19 years in the business. That's commission only. Yeah. So That's the part of it that people don't understand. That, like you it's, said, it's commission, commission only. only. So understand, folks, like Jada Kiss said, you don't hustle, you don't eat. It's true. That's, yeah. that's the name of the game. So slow feet don't eat. Slow feet don't eat. Most you got to hustle. Don't get fed. So you got to get out there and you got to grind. Um, whatever your niche is, if you're good with... People, um, just continue to talk to people. Let everybody know what you do uh, when it comes to the business. Um, if you're a people person, uh, network with as many people as you can network with. All your friends, your family, let them all know what you're doing. Um, you have some that will support. You have some that won't. And that's just the nature of the game. Chalk it up. And the ones that support you, put more time into spending with them because you want them to continue to sing your praises to others. And it'll continue to grow from there, grow from there. And then you have... All the naysayers, all the people that didn't believe in you, when you start to get successful, now they will want to jump on the bandwagon. So just continue to do the things that you're doing and um, know that at some point everything will start to turn around. But you just you got to put that time into it. You got to have faith and you got to believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, I'm not going to believe in you. So at the end of the day, make sure that when you're projecting your voice or you're projecting the information to people, you sound like you know what you're talking about. You look presentable because I don't want to look and work with somebody that looks like a lumberjack or they just came out of, <laughs> they just came from roller skating. You know, if you're doing real estate, you want to look, you want to look the part, you want to look presentable. So, you know, if you do those things, everything at some point will start to turn around for you. I feel gems. motivated. M million dollar I'm, gems. I'm ready to like do something. I don't yeah. know what I'm ready to do, but I'm ready to do something. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm glad that I can help. <laughs> So, Femi, any any last words, man? Any you gave a lot of you gave us a lot of game. Anything else you could leave us off with? Um, listen, we're 19 years in. I mean, the business is the business can be fun when you're making money. Um, when you're not doing the things that you need to do, then yes, it's not going to be fun. So, um, whatever time that you're spending doing talk. real estate, make sure that you're really putting that time into really doing money making activities. So, when you're in the office. If, you, if you're on the phones, you just make phone calls. Make sure that you're banging away at the phone and you're making those phone calls. Make sure you're not on Instagram. Make sure you're not on Facebook. Make sure you're not on your computer watching YouTube. Make sure that you're on the phones for whatever time. If you say, I'm going to dedicate two to three hours a day making phone calls, make sure you dedicate that time into making those phone calls. And understand that everybody, like I said, is not going to say no to you. There are all going to be some yeses. So just continue to build off of those yeses. Um, and as long as you do that, I think you'll be okay. But always understand in that first year or two, it's going to take time before everything starts to fall into place. But just understand that it is, it's, it's a marathon. So, um, you know, put the time into it. Be serious about your craft. Um, believe in yourself. Invest in yourself. Better in yourself. And I think as long as you do that, you'll be fine. Because every other person I know that, 
been successful in this business or any business that you're in. You had to bet on yourself. You had to believe in yourself. You had to put in the time. So a lot of things that a lot of people don't see and they don't believe in or they don't know what your back end story is, make sure you hold on to all those things and use that as your motivation. Use that as the fuel to get you through. And as long as you do that, you'll be okay. Keys to I'm success. Pumped. I'm pumped. Yeah. <laughs> Family, we appreciate you coming on, man. Whoa, wait, hold on. Femi 2.0, please tell us. Any last words? Any, any advice you can give to any new agents? Um, Just be motivated. You know, like my dad said, you got to start from somewhere. You, you, you don't start at the top, so um, you kind of got to earn your stripes, earn your rank. So you got to put the time and put the work in. You can't just be lazy and expect to see results. You know, you got to actually put work in, stay motivated and dedicated and start seeing results, you know. Not the first year, maybe. Maybe not the first two years. You got to kind of align yourself with the right people. Like I'm with my dad and the team I'm with has been helping me out a lot. So I just staying on the right path and staying focused and you'll get where you need to go. There and you always go. remember, folks, every overnight success is 10 years in the making. There you go. Every single overnight success. So don't watch social media and see somebody that just got their license two weeks ago and they're telling you they're a real estate guru or a real estate <laughs> expert. <laughs> Scam! Know that, yeah, know that you got to put in the time. Don't compare other people's success to yours. To yours. You, know? you, you cannot, sh- just like my son said, don't compare other people's success to yours. Know that you're on your own time. You're on your own time. You're on your own schedule. So never compare where you are in, you know, as far as your progress compared to somebody else's. Everybody else's story is different. Everybody else may not have children. You may have kids. They may not have kids. So everybody's story is different. Everybody's um, situation is different. So never compare yourself to anybody else. It could take you five years before everything starts to turn around. If it's five years for you, it's five years. There's some people that will have all the ideas in the world, will have all the drive, but they won't put any, they won't execute. So, like I said, don't compare yourself to anybody else. Do what you need to do. Stay focused, believe in yourself, and you'll be fine. I'm out there going to sell 100 houses. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Yo, Femi, we appreciate know. you coming by, man. Thank you for having us. My boy, he, you brought the heat. I had to bring the heat. He had you to get the crown me, today. You text me and then you had sent me the that. You, you DM me the story early. I saw the story. I'm like, I got motivated. <laughs> I didn't want to be the one to come through with no heat. And I had a feeling you were going to come with some dead stock. So, you know, I had to pull some heat out from the back of the closet. So, Yo, I'm you glad, got first you know. place, you know what they say. First is the worst, second is the best. I got second place, people. <laughs> you got all the easy shit. <laughs> Checks over stripes, though. Checks over stripes. Third is the one with the hairy chest. I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn. So we out. That's episode what? 24. <laughs> and uh, yeah, cue the outro. Thank you for tuning in to the Real Estate and Chill Podcast with James Chantry and Kevin Iglesias. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, Share this with your friends, your enemies, your mother-in-law. No, seriously, this podcast is so fucking good, you might want to tell your ex. See you next time.